After literally only waiting for two minutes, the fire is roaring and it's almost smokeless. To start off the build, I will need some materials. As for the steel components, I have recently purchased some lengths of steel. Now that I have cut the main parts of the body, I'll just quickly go over it with the grinder. After deburring all of the sharp edges, I will have to do some cutouts in the pipe for the ashtray and for the fuel feeder tube. To know how much I have to cut away, I just have to measure the inside of the feeder tube. It is about 163 millimeters. This right here is a perfect example of why having tools like the bandsaw is way better than just using the angle grinder. Of course, if you're following along and the angle grinder is all you have, that's what you have to do with and it will be all right. But I highly recommend you guys getting a bandsaw like this one or literally any other brand. Whatever works is just fine. After tacking the main body, it's time to fully weld it up. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I've just welded the main body and I will skip these welds right here and here because they are quite hard to access with my TIG torch and also I think the gap is so small that almost no flames or air will escape. The welds didn't turn out great, I think either it's something with the gas or maybe it's just me who hasn't been practicing enough. It's probably number two. I almost forgot something, there has to be a grate that sits right above the ashtray right here just on the inside of course and i think it's gonna be quite hard to put in now but i'll try and see what works after some diligent work I got my TIG welder down into this crevice and I definitely think it will hold because it only has to carry the weight of a few sticks. And for the tray that will catch all of the ashes going down from this grate right here, I'll be using this 90 by 90 millimeter length of steel that I've just placed in the saw. For the ashtray to work, I'll just need a tiny sliver of this pipe right here. That was the main part of the ashtray. It slides in and out pretty well. For the ashtray to work properly and to seal off the back end right here, I will have to fabricate an end cap. And if I'm lucky, I can just use the old piece I cut out right here. It seals decently and it has the perfect fit already. On top of that, I will have to make a handle so that I don't burn my fingers when I pull the ashtray out to empty it.
To easily dump the ashes, I'll use this handle that I have repurposed from an old chisel. I accidentally welded the plate a bit too high on the ashtray, but I think this will still work. When using the rocket stove, you would often go out camping in the wild or have it on your lawn. So I will just have to make some legs so that the hot steel doesn't touch the ground. For the legs, I'll just be using this 30 by 30 millimeter steel and it should be quick and easy to make. So let's get going. The legs have now been put on and the height is more suitable for cooking when you are sitting on a chair. But before I can cook anything, I need a stove top. To make the stove top, I've just cut a thin slice that matches the measurement of the flame tube. To lock it in place, I'll just be welding a steel peg in each corner. After some slight adjustment with a hammer, I got it to fit pretty snug. I'm not done with the cooktop yet. I still need to make a cross so that the pots and pans don't fall off easily.
stove is almost finished. Now let's have a look. We have the lid for the fuel door. We have the stove top. Ashtray. Quick and easy. And three legs to elevate it to a comfortable level. Before testing it out, I just want to give it a quick paint job. For jobs like this, I generally use paint meant for chimneys. Now shake it up, let's get painting. Letting the paint dry for about half an hour and I think it's ready to be fired up for the first time. You can almost use anything you want as fuel as long as it's pretty dry and it isn't crooked. It has to be kind of straight for it to go down the tube. I usually go with lumber because I know it's dry and it has a straight grain. And I just chop it up like this. When starting a fire, it's very important to start with small pieces and then build your way up to the bigger and thicker stuff. And when you're ready, you just throw it in. You might think now that it's very hard to reach the sticks to ignite them, but that's where the ashtray comes in handy. Shoot straight up into the sticks. And after a couple of seconds, the fire should be able to sustain itself and when you see the smoke coming here, you just close the door and then everything should come out of the burn tube. And you can really see how quickly it takes off. Now when you feel like it, you can put in the ashtray again, so you're ready to catch all of the droppings. And when the fire has started to go off, you can just add more fuel. After literally only waiting for two minutes, the fire is roaring and it's almost smokeless, as you can see. The reason why there is any smoke at all right now is because it's still a new burn and the paint will often smoke right in the beginning. It might be hard to see, but if there's any smoke coming out of the door, you can add a gasket if you want. But every time you open it, a lot of smoke will come out. The reason why we don't want a lot of smoke coming out of the door is because it's actually the smoke that burns. Another great attribute of this type of rocket stove is that if you have any wet sticks you can just put them right here in this sharp angle and it will dry over time because it emits a lot of heat. If you look closely you can also see some smoke coming off the paint right here. This will only happen the first time after painting 
It's because the paint has some residues that need to be burned off for it to harden. The stove has been on for about 15 minutes and now it's time to see how much time it takes to boil one liter of water. The timer starts now. Okay, something has started to happen. Small bubbles are forming at the bottom and I think it's going pretty well. The flame is wrapping around the sides of the pot, so it's evenly distributed heat, which is quite a good thing when you're trying to boil some water. Okay, the water is about to boil, and it started off at one liter, and it's a bit less, so I think it's about 800 milliliters left. I should probably have had a lid on to keep all of the water vapors inside, but it has taken about four or five minutes, and I think that's pretty great without a lid. All right, now the water is boiling. I think that indicates that stoves like this are quite efficient for outdoor camping, and I haven't really used a lot of fuel, maybe I think 10 sticks of this size to boil one liter of water, and I think that is pretty great. And there's still some fuel left right here. The only downside of a stove like this is that it is quite tedious to move around and it's also quite heavy. That was it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing and dropping a like. And if you have any suggestions, please write them down in the comments. See you guys!